said, welcome once again to this fifth Sunday in the season of Pentecost as we continue to celebrate the birth and the life and the ministry of the church. Today we're pleased and we're welcomed that you have joined us for this time of worship. May the love of God and the, the grace of Christ and the friendship and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you. Our vision here at Morgan Hill United Methodist Church is to live in a faith community that is inclusive, that is reconciling and progressing. A faith community that welcomes all people based on the teachings of Jesus to love one another. Here in this place, Christ welcomes all, so all are welcome. Here human diversity matters, open minds matter, prayerful hearts, guided by spirit, rooted in scripture, tradition, reason, and human experience matter. Here, God does not discriminate. Today we celebrate the confirmation of three of our young people, Adriana Saffel, Jackson Clayton, and Oliver Giddings. And Oliver is going to be confirmed in the Lutheran Church, but he chose and wanted to be a part with the class of 2021 confirmants here at Morgan Hill United Methodist Church. So later in the service, uh, as you can see the, uh, the slide presentation of Adriana's uh, baptism and, uh, and then the, uh, the video of the confirmation for Jackson Clayton, you'll notice that Oliver was, was not confirmed uh, because Oliver now will be confirmed in his church, the Lutheran Church in San Diego. But he gets all of the accolades and, uh, and the joys and the prayers that we have and we offer him in, in love and, and support. All three of these young people will be leading us today in our worship service and your heart will be blessed as you watch them share their faith statements, a scripture that they have chosen, and also a hymn they have chosen. Today is also Pride Sunday, when we remember and we commemorate on the morning of Saturday, June 28th, 1969, when LGBTQ plus people stood up for their civil rights and for human dignity, following a, a police raid on the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, the neighborhood there of Lower Manhattan in New York City. That event became a pivotal moment in the LGBTQ plus civil rights movement to this day. So let us now join our hearts and our spirits together in this time of worship as Jackson Clayton, one of our confirmants for membership in the United Methodist Church, leads us in our call to worship. Thank you, Jackson. Hello, my name is Jackson Clayton and I invite you to hear this call to worship. With friends and strangers, with family and neighbors, we come together in the presence of a healing God whose love never ends. With faith reaching out to touch, and with hearts seeking tr to trust, we hope in God, who is our friend and whose compassion makes us whole, whose words sound like music to our ears. Come, Holy Presence, in this time of worship, and be among us and lift us to our feet to follow you. Please pray with me. From fears that frighten us, heal us, Lord. From illness that chokes us and we cannot breathe, heal us, Lord. From those things that make us sad, mad, hurt, and bitter, heal us, Lord. From those things that blind us from seeing your vision of joy, hope, faith, and love, heal us, Lord, we pray. Amen. Please sing along as the words appear on your screen, and Steve Cole leads us in this wonderful hymn, They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. 
we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, we will walk with each other, we will Hand in hand, and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side and we'll guard human dignity and save human pride and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes they'll know we are Christians by our love. My scripture reading for my faith statement is Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified. Because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. <clears throat> I believe that God will be with me and love me no matter what happens. I believe that God is the creator of everything. I believe that Jesus is always in my heart, giving me love and happiness and will forgive me for anything I do. I believe that the Holy Spirit is inside of me and connects me to God and Jesus. I have been with the United Methodist Church my whole life and all the experiences and activities and love and happiness has made it a warm place and a new and a second home for me. I believe that the Holy Trinity is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, all in one, and they are all connected within me. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you again, Jackson. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, whose faith we support with our prayers, our presence, our giving, our witness, and our service. When Jesus called his disciples, he led them to places where marginalization had rendered people sick, hungry, and burdened. Then he challenged unjust systems and offered healing touch and brought life to the dying and the dead. He brought good news to those outside of systems of power. Today, Jesus continues to call us to discipleship, to fight systems that exclude and harm God's children. While United Methodists focus on addressing dramatic instances of racism out there, out there in the world, we still have to remember there is no out there. There is only here, now, in this moment, where we are called to guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. Racism assaults the mental, spiritual, and emotional well-being, not just of one group, but all people. The General Commission on Religion and Race for the United Methodist Church is supported by the World Service Fund, to which we give our financial support every week. The General Commission on Race and Religion challenges, leads, and equips the people of the United Methodist Church to become interculturally competent, ensure institutional equity, and facilitate vital conversations about religion and, re and race and cultural sensitivity, not just in our communities, but also at all levels of our government. Together we can build a more loving world. So I invite you to give generously as we worship God through sharing our gifts and our tithes and our offerings 
our prayers for one another, our presence, even online, our witness, and our service. Although we cannot put our, our gifts in an offering plate on a Sunday, we still can visit our giving page on this website and see the opportunities to give either directly online or by using our mobile devices or through our bank's online payment systems and always by mail. Remember, our gifts, they come from us, the people of God, for the work of God, to the glory of God in the world. So I invite you now to hear it, uh, all of our giddings, uh, one of our young people from our Confirmant class of 2021, who will offer our offertory prayer at this time. Thank you, Oliver. Hello, my name is Oliver. Please pray with me. God of boundless generosity, as we offer our gifts and our lives to you, help us to hear the Apostle Paul, who taught us that to grow as disciples is to grow in generosity. The abundance we've been given has a purpose in your plan, that we might know the joy of sharing with those in need. In the name of Christ, our teacher and redeemer, we pray. Amen. Please listen now as David Tuttle provides a special musical offertory entitled Thanks God, written and performed on guitar by Dave Tuttle. My scripture reading today for my faith statement is Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys, they flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal, the wild donkeys quench their thirst. By the streams the birds of the air have their habitation, they sing among the branches. From your lofty abode you water the mountains, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle, and plants for people to use, to bring forth food from the earth, and wine to God in the human heart oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests, the stork has its home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats, the rocks are a refuge for the conies. You have made the moon to mark the seasons, the sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness, and it is night. When all the animals of the forest come creeping out, the young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships in the in Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. 
When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is my faith statement, and this I believe. I think God's just as flawed as everyone else. If he made us in his image, every misdeed we make is one he may commit as well. If I lie and say that I finished my homework when I really didn't, then it was destined to happen, or God would have done it himself. Another flawed thing is this whole afterlife, Delio. What about the other five billion people who aren't Christian? Do they all go to hell or heaven automatically? Do they go to their own separate afterlife? On the topic of other religions, are those gods still real? If hundreds of millions of people worship them, there must be some basis. Is there some god family gathering where they, where every religion's gods just go to a supplantation together? Or does God go around defeating those other gods in his spare time just to show its superiority? The hymn I have chosen is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Please sing along as Steve Cole leads us in this old and familiar hymn favorite. What a fellowship, what a joy to find leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. Right the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arm. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting Thank you, Oliver, David, and Steve. Always remember that nothing can separate us from the love of God shown to us in Jesus the Christ. Please keep in your prayers for peace, comfort, strength, and healing. Those who have lost loved ones and are struggling with their own grief and sadness as a family. Please remember in your prayers for strength and healing. We keep in our prayers Roger, Saba, Karen, Mitzi, Jamie, Jane, Grace, Dawn, Teresa, Beverly, Marina, Mary, Billy, Kim, Stephanie, Kathy, Gladys, Chrissy, Denise, Dave, Beth, Bodie, Kat, Ellen, Cricket, and Dan. And for peace and comfort, we keep in our prayers the Thomas family, the Whitman family, Chance's family, and Charlotte and Paul and their families. We keep in our prayers the families, friends, and neighbors of the apartment building collapse in Surfside, Florida. We ask for prayers of protection for those who are searching for the missing. We also offer our thankfulness for those who have been vaccinated against the COVID-19 virus, and we pray that more may receive this needed vaccination and protection. We pray for the safety of those caught up in these times of violence in our cities, and we pray that more compassionate spirits, hearts, and minds will prevail. And we continue to pray for our firefighters, especially during this emerging drought and dry conditions that threaten wildfires. 
We pray for our public service workers who protect our communities and provide essential services, especially the safety of our police. We pray for those who work in our grocery stores, our first responders, paramedics, doctors, nurses, and all medical personnel. We also pray for the safety of President Biden and Vice President Harris and for our government representatives, both at the state, federal, and local levels. Let us pray and urge our elected representatives at all levels of government to work toward a more cooperative government. We pray, we continue to pray for support and protection and an effective response to the racism that has plagued our communities. Please continue to email your prayer concerns to us here at the church office so that Pastor Patrick and our prayer team may keep your concerns in our prayers this week. For the prayers shared and those that remain in the silent places of our heart, we say to the Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Please listen now as Adriana Saffo, one of our young people and confirmants from the class of 2021, leads us in the prayer of the people and the Lord's Prayer. Hello, my name is Adriana Saffo. Please join me in this prayer of the people and the Lord's Prayer. O Lord, you are indeed the healer of all of our ills. We bring to you, Lord, our bodies, minds, and spirits hurting and broken by the violence, ills, and trauma and care of a world separated from you. Come to us now with your healing powers. O oh God, we ask that you heal us. Give us the strength, health, wisdom, and knowledge found only through you. Send your life-giving spirits that we may take, live our whole lives with courage and the peace of your love. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe on us, O oh God, and make us whole. O oh God, we ask that you sustain those who seek to heal the pain and suffering in this world. Give strength, courage, wisdom, and knowledge to all doctors and orderlies, nurses and clerks, say psychiatrists, researchers, and all other medical caregivers, volunteers, and professionals. Send your life-giving spirit to death that their ministries may bring healing and promote health. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe on us, O God, and make us whole. Be also with those who heal the wounds of societies and nations. Guide, protect, and strengthen our lawyers and police chaplains and pastors, healthcare and social workers, politicians, military, diplomats, and all others who work for economic and social reform. Send your life-giving spirit that they may promote your love and grace, bringing healing to those in conflict and stability to those who are vulnerable. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe on us, O God, and make us whole. We seek all this as we pray with one voice, as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgo those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture verse I have chosen to share from my faith statement is from Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. See, the Lord's hand is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. This I believe. What Jesus is to me is a role model. He's someone who confidently fought against status quo, who protected and furthered the less fortunate, who demanded that upholders of corruption change their ways, a teacher through and through, and fundamentally human. The Holy Spirit to me is a more confusing idea. It's something I don't think I can fully comprehend. Maybe I never will. Well, I see the Holy Spirit as a feeling, I guess, but different from God. Something you feel rarely. Something I'm not sure if I felt yet. I bet it's warm and comforting. God is also feeling, but I view her as something maternal. A purely feminine maternal force, that is. Something that has got me through moments I wasn't ready for. When I prayed every day in my parents' bathroom in sixth grade for my friend to come back from a mental hospital, she was there. When I sat in a spaghetti factory crying into my forever best friend's shoulder after an interaction with a boy I knew who was being hurt by a girl he thought he loved, she was there. When I opened my head thinking the worst possible thoughts, I can feel her present in my chair in the corner. She's purely good, something raw that kept me going and something I spent a lot of time thinking about. The church's community. I've never been stable in my faith before this, and I'm not sure if I am now, to be honest. But there are so many moments where I felt God in these hallways, where I sat down and felt purely good, purely content. When I was little, I would tell myself I was here for the food and babies at Sunday school. 
and as, when I was older, I often viewed it as a chore. Over quarantine, I've missed it more than I can put into words. I love this church. I love the way that my mom feels here, how she looks so at home. I love the way the paint clearly needs to be redone and the old wooden place set is full of hazards. I love that even though I don't know any of these people's names, I can confidently say I'm a part of this congregation. Patrick's laugh got me through some weeks. Jeannie and the youth too. Wherever Kai is, he's held in that regard as well. Potlucks, Easter, Christmas, so many things I could talk about. I had to put out a fire on my sister's hair once in the middle of Las Posadas. But my notes app is very full and it's very late. So I'll just say it again. I love this church so much and the experiences it gave me shaped me as a person. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join Steve Cole as he leads us in the hymn and the words appear on your device entitled, May the Circle Be Unbroken. Will the circle be unbroken by and by? Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's good gift to us without any price. Through confirmation, we renew the covenant that was declared at our baptism, acknowledging what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. So we, as a family, have gathered today for Jackson Clayton's confirmation to confirm his baptism that was made in his name when he was just a baby. And here he is today. And how old are you? 
14 years later. Who presents Jackson for proclamation? We do. We do. Okay. Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad. <laughs> That's true. All right, Jackson. On behalf of the whole church, I'm going to ask you some questions today. Uh, and you will just simply reply, I do. If you say anything other than that, that would not be the time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So, Jackson, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of evil and accept the forgiveness and the grace of God? I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord? I do. Okay, this is to uh, Bill, you and and Jeannie as the parents. Will you nurture Jackson in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself to profess his faith openly and in the way of Jesus Christ his Lord? I do. Yeah. Okay. Jackson, according to the grace that's given to Will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? I do. Now, those of you who are here as sponsors and family, this is a question to you. Will you, who sponsor Jackson, support and encourage him in his Christian faith? I love it. Okay. Uh, your brother said that too, so that's a good <laughs> All right, now to the congregation, those of you who are watching in your homes, this question goes to you, and we will in our hearts answer, we do. Do you, as Christ's holy church, the body of Christ, reaffirm both your acceptance of God's grace and forgiveness, as we can all say together, and we all will say this, we do. Okay. So we're going to do a blessing now over uh, the sacred oil before we do the anointing of the oil. So we ask Holy God that you pour out your Holy Spirit and bless this gift of oil. And bless Jackson who receives it. And clothe him in righteousness throughout his life that dying and being raised with Christ he may share in your final victory. So, Jackson, you ready? Okay. I know you in the name of the Creator God and the Christ who redeems you and the Holy Spirit that sustains you. And everybody will put your hands on the ground and this right? This we will be okay. So everybody can get around and can you get up over there? That'll work. That's good. We've got tricks. All right. And I want the camera to be able to get this to All right. Jackson, may the Holy Spirit work within you. That being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. And now, we ask that you remember your baptism and your mom's going to put a cross around your head. I feel so blessed to have a very different folky voice. <laughs> and Grace Braun, our youth minister, will come and bestow his confirmation stole. Good job. Okay. Now, as a member of 
Christ's holy church. Will you now be faithful and loyal to the United Methodist Church? Will you support the church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your witness, and your service? And you forget all that, just ask me. <laughs> and your answer will be, I will. I will. Okay, good. <laughs> and now at this time we invite uh, one of our youth assistants to come and address the congregation, uh, Darcy Foster. Members of the household of God, I commend Jackson to your love and to care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. Amen. 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 Let us pray. We give thanks for all that God has already given Jackson, and we welcome him in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our witness, and our service. That is everything God may be glorified. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Welcome. Right. <laughs> you are no longer a preparatory member. <laughs> you are a full member, which means you can vote, and you will be serving on the leadership team. You are Adrian Arnold about every other month. <laughs> All right. God bless. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, and it's our turn to celebrate the life of our church. I would like to wish Helen a very happy birthday. Helen celebrated her birthday on June 24th. I would also like to wish Annabelle a very happy birthday. She celebrates her birthday on June 29th. And I'd like to wish Wendy a very happy birthday. She celebrates her birthday on June 30th. Happy birthday, Helen, Annabelle, and Wendy. And to Pastor Patrick, and I hope I can get through this, we recognize your 10 years of priestly ministry service to the Lord here at Morgan Hill United Methodist Church. Your friendship and the difference that you have made in the lives of so many as our preacher, our elder, our teacher, our counselor. Surely you will always be remembered. Now, as the story which is your life opens to its next chapter, may the God of grace richly bless and watch over you. May the God of peace grant you peace always. And may the God of abundant joy shower you daily. And from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, I know what I am planning for you, says the Lord. I have plans to give you hope and a good future. Thank you for everything and everyone that you have brought to our church. Okay, I did that for you. And now, for our announcements, I cried every time I tried to, to do a new practice. So, <laughs> a big thank you also for Darcy and all of her help in the kitchen, dealing with the flooding, the electrical, the plumbing, the stopped up stuff and everything that brought in a new problem. And... Um, Darcy spent, I don't even know how many weeks, several at least, because it was this piece and then that piece and then this piece. So it's all good. We've got water back in the kitchen. Thank you very much, Darcy. And just a reminder that the leadership team meets the second Sunday of each month, and our next meeting is July 18th. And we want to say thank you so much for watching our weekly worship experience online. Invite someone to watch, watch past ones. But look forward to an email soon when we will be giving you information about meeting in person once again. That's coming hopefully in a couple weeks. Yay! And now, Oliver will be bringing us our benediction. Our service has ended. Go out this week into the world among the outcast and the grieving and speak the word of life and hope. Do not fear, but trust in God's word. Watch for the Lord with eager expectation, and be generous with all God has given you. Our closing hymn is This Little Light. Please sing along to the words as they appear on your screen.
this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine 